opening our 135 gallon per hour solar hybrid pump, we find all of the included accessories including our panel, the stake, our nozzles, the light ring, our hybrid charger, one of the most important things, the battery house itself. The first step is to make sure that your battery unit is charged. You can do that by either attaching it to your solar panel and giving it about eight hours or use the hybrid charging plug-in unit on an indoor plug to fully charge your unit before use. Of course the heart of the system is the pump. When you open the package you'll see this pond housing that holds the pump unit inside of it should you choose to use this in a pond environment. To open the unit simply push into the tab and you'll find the pump inside. You'll notice that the flow control is completely open. That reduces your flow. Now we're going to remove that housing. It's admittedly a bit of a tough pull to get that off. There we go. And now we're going to put the cover that's used for fountain application. Just has a small screen there to prevent the large debris from entering your pump. So we're going to plug the pump cord into the middle socket that's clearly labeled pump. We've used that on this fountain here where we require quite a bit of flow because there's a wide spill point and we have about two and a half feet of water lift that's required. Now this is set to half power. You can of course adjust to suit. Of course we turn the unit on using the on button and then you can adjust the various modes. We recommend the if you want to run this pump continuously to put it in the auto mode which is explained well in our instruction manual. The basic theory here is that as long as there's charge to the battery, then this will continue to power your pump unit. Now, what will happen is, is as the battery drains, of course, the pump will stop working, but the house will automatically get a charge when you have sun the next day and will activate the pump on its own when it has enough battery power. In effect, this is not running off the solar panel but running off the battery inside this battery control unit. You'll notice a couple other settings as well using the mode button. You can set it to run for two hours and shut itself down or four hours and shut itself down and it will begin to operate at the same time the next day. There's also a battery low indicator there. The light will flash when the battery is getting low and when it's a solid red of course your pump won't be working. Now that we've chosen to use the nozzles and light and use this pump in a pond application, we're going to put it back inside the pump housing simply by slipping this top cover on and make sure that it snaps correctly into place. Nozzle assembly, very simple of course. You've got your three riser pieces, then you have your choice of two nozzles. If you're going to use your LED light ring, that of course will fit on top of your uppermost riser before you add your nozzle head. From there you're going to plug the cord into the LED on the far right. Of course it's the one that isn't uh, sealed. The one on the left is sealed. So this is the correct look of how you would fully assemble this unit with light and nozzle. So you may notice that we plug the light in and the lights are not on. That's of course because the panel itself has some light still, that is the sensor for the unit to turn the lights on by itself. We're going to unplug the cord here just to show you that once unplugged it has to cycle itself on. There we go, lights are on now. So it reads that there's no light coming in and turns the lights on automatically. When it comes to panel placement away from your fountain, you'll find that you have plenty of cord. You have more than two meters that goes from the solar panel to the battery at house itself and almost five meters from the battery house to the fountain itself, which allows you to place this panel not only at a 45 degree angle, but in a place that gives you the best possible exposure to the sun.